All right, so here we are back again. Now, last time I mentioned for this year, PNSO seems to be about variety, and we probably wouldn't have to worry about another spree of dinos from one clade. But right on the heels of the Tameri Raptor, we have this another Cacarodontosaurid, the Toro Venator. That also means that after putting all my Cacarodontosaurids back on the shelf, I find myself having to take them down again for the comparisons later. Toro Venator, which consists of the holotype postorbital and referred material, gives us this. So while certainly less than you might hope for, it's actually decent for the generally fragmentary Cacarodontosaurids. And in fact, significant for having the posterior part of the skull, so that between all the members of the clade, reconstructions can be better informed all around. Right off the bat, let me just say that the pose is one of the best I've ever seen. It's very dynamic. For those who are really sick and tired of neutral walking poses, this will make them very happy. You can see how the body is angled downwards like this, with the tail counterbalancing that tilt. It looks like it's actively hunting and very much alive. It's very well balanced, although it's a pity we'll eventually have to use the stand as a precaution against warping. While the overall form is really pleasing, the colours are also better than PNSO's expected for a theropod. There are some striking colour choices, such as a bit of blue worked into the snout, and very nicely placed dark cyan tones right under that orange streak, which all contributes to making the head area very eye-catching. What is also unusual is the patterning. It's not the same old tired stripes. Although it might look brownish at first glance, I'd say the overall impression is more in orange. The pattern is irregular and were the separating lines thinner, could have been nicely reticulated, just like a giraffe. The colour blends all look natural, and very easy on the eyes. Now measurement-wise, I've seen estimates from 10.5 to 12 metres, or 34.4 to 39.4 feet, suggesting this could have been one of the largest predatory dinosaurs. Accounting for the body's curvature, I get about 31.5 centimeters or 12.4 inches. This puts it comfortably in the 1 to 35 range for an 11 meter or 36.1 foot animal. Now here's my wonder artistic 1 to 35 humanoid, and you can see this guy is in serious trouble. The name Toro Venator means bull hunter from the Latin Taurus and Venator, due to the original holotype postorbital being very rugose and bearing a projection suggestive of horns. Speaking of which, let's take a closer look starting at the head. Now first off, when I look at this model in entirety, the first word that comes to mind is refinement. In the head, you'll see the fine detail around the maxillary area, and how they subtly change form near the quadratajugal area. Around the lips, you get those larger labial scales that PNSO often gives their theropods. Even from a distance, the light catches all those minute scales in the jaw area beautifully. The eyes are carefully painted. And here in the post-orbital, PNSO has reconstructed a crest that extends into the nasal, and I must say this is very nicely done. Though I've gotten attached to a more distinct structure, such as in this portrait. And while the paint is one main colour, it doesn't appear dabbed on or sloppy. Superiorly, we also see different scale textures, adding to the realism. Now the colour really deserves special mention. There's a subtle infusion of blue here. Then further up, you see a dark cyan that contrasts very nicely with the complementary orange in the crest. The thing that's really outstanding is that yes, this model has lips. But more importantly, look at the seal. It's almost gapless. When you look at it from the side, 
This is easily the best seal I've seen on any mass-produced model with an articulated jaw. You might spot a tiny gap in one spot, but it's negligible. Overall, the teeth are extremely well wrapped and well sealed, which is the very purpose of the lips. Open the mouth. The teeth are very nicely painted. The refinement becomes obvious when you compare the tooth size to something like my almond. This really feels like a pinnacle for what PNSO has achieved so far. Now looking down the body, the same level of refinement continues. The scales are very finely sculpted. The spots are softly blended and nothing looks stark and painted on. Even along the darker dorsal ridge, the scale detail is evident. And we might as well have a look at those midline dermal spines. And again, it's pleasing how even in the dark, you can make out the detail. On the convex side, the refinement is even easier to appreciate. I feel compelled to bring in the almond here. The standard now is such that, frankly, this easily matches up to many resin kit models on the market, at a tiny fraction of the price. Now moving to the upper limb now, and here in the shoulder, you see the detail I always want to check out. Now you know I like freaky arms, and as puny as Kakarodontosaurid arms are, Toro Venato is known for having proportionately the smallest ones out of all the Kakarodontosaurids. PNSO has captured this very real, articulated, and still functional limb, with claws that are sharp, and you can even make out the slightly enlarged second claw. Now, just because they're small doesn't make them formless and unseparated. Despite the tiny size, the arms hold up under magnification, and that's not easy to do. Now moving down to the hips and the thighs, Wow, the texture here looks fantastically real. You can see the calf muscles are very clearly defined, and how the muscles are wrapped in those very fine scales. The spots blend very naturally into the surrounding. In the feet, the refinement and the form of the claws mirror the high standard seen in the fingers. A look at those cutes. I really like the wicked looking claws here. There's a bit of a shine on them. Beautiful and very, very dangerous. And now a shot of the tail going down. Again, I'm in wonder at the size of these scales. Even in areas that are usually neglected or not closely scrutinized, there are no weak spots.
a quick look at the underside now. So that's it for the Toro Venator, a very impressive model. The colors work naturally, the sculpting is refined throughout, and the mouth with the lips actually seal properly. The tiny hands, the surface detail, the overall execution, it really feels like PNSO has reached a new level with this Terrapod. Let's get to the comparisons. And we'll be looking at some of PNSO's other Kakarodontosaurids. First, PNSO's last model, the Tameri Raptor. And these two poses couldn't be more different. We see that one is posed very much downwards, and the other is inclined upwards. What a nice contrast next to each other. Next, we have the PNSO Mapusaurus, which was initially believed to be the same as Tauro Venator. What a beautiful colour and pattern here. Then comes, in my mind, the most beautiful colour and pattern combo in PNSO's theropods, the Acrocanthosaurus. Bringing in the Cacarodontosaurus, the dinosaur that gave its name to the group. A beautiful and the most flamboyant one, the PNSO Tyranotitan. Bringing up the rear, we have the PNSO Giganotosaurus which gave its name to the subclade to which today's Tauro Venator belongs, the Giganotus Sorini. You might want to see Haolongku's own Giganotosaurus. And for our final size comparators, we have the PNSO Wilson and the PNSO Cameron. So that's it for the very exciting and very orangey PNSO Toro Venator. The pose is fantastic and very action-packed. The detail is exquisite with a very high level of refinement. And on top of that, a mouth that seals beautifully, which is exactly what we want to see with lips. Otherwise, I'd argue, what's the point? And this, I think for me, is the epitome of PNSO's current level of refinement. At the same time, I have to say that while these larger ones might be easier to retool, please give us an obvious member of the clade, the elusive Concavenator. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.